Hey everyone, Sci47 here. Welcome back to the Legendary and Epic Commander's Guide Part 2. If you haven't seen Part 1, I will put up the Part 1 in the cards right now. But this is a new or prospective buyer's guide right now in this video. Veterans, once again, please let me know if I'm missing any combinations or anything like that. This is definitely to set a bunch of information in a video for a kind of a timestamp so that in the future we can update as builds come out and new commanders come in. But this isn't a builds video exactly. I will not be showing specific builds for these commanders. If you need those, please ask in the comment section down below or join up on Discord and people give you the most up-to-date and more accurate builds for your specific wants and needs because sometimes one legendary commander or epic commander is used on a few different ships, so you want to take in consideration on that. But let's get into it. Once again, thank you to TAC and the CIC website for all this information in order to make these videos possible. First up to bat, we have Franz von Hipper. Franz von Hipper is pretty much every ship with secondaries. Anything that you have secondaries on, put him on. He makes it even better. With all of his skills, with especially Armor Piercing Cap Shell Plus or APCS Plus and Close Quarter Combat Expert Plus, he makes the Schlieffen an absolute monster. So that's my first pick that I put him on. But of course, you can put him right on the GK as well to help make those secondaries at least a little bit better. And he does have APCS Plus and Marksman Plus, so technically you could put him on the Hindenburg to make the Hindenburg that much more nasty. So if you are looking for a Hindenburg Commander, Hipper does work there as well. Moving on to Sheer. Sheer is pretty much going to be anything you want to be making tankier. You just put him on there, especially with the Horizontal Protection Expert Plus. Extinguisher Plus, which actually we have recently found out in just the last few months from Terry's video on it, that pretty much, yeah, Extinguisher Plus actually saves you a lot more health than is perceived, so that might be a great pickup, but Generalist Plus, Survivalist Plus, just makes anything tankier, so this goes right on the GK for me, specifically, but odd one in there, the Elbing. If you don't really have anything particular for the Elbing to put on that line, Sheer makes it oddly, oddly tanky for a DD and absolutely can make that basically a little cruiser without any Citadel at all. So if you are looking for a better Elbing commander there, Sheer can fit in there if you're not particularly going up the GK line at all. Moving on to Lutens. Or Luchins, Luchins, I'm probably slaughtering it, and I know I'm, I, I should be able to say it, I have ancestry in Germany, but nope, not, not doing that one, maybe I'll get roasted by Sai again in the future, but we have pretty much the Manfred Commander, now a lot of people go, whoa, 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 he's got a lot of different skills here, yes, because of his heavy AP shells, increasing AP gen damage in general, he works basically on anything. I would say Manfred just because of the bomb damage and the Citadel damage plus the Close Quarters Combat Expert, but overall you can work him on Manfred pretty darn well and that really does help out your AP bombs just chunk. But of course GK can work, Mecklenburg especially with that heavy AP, the amount of shells you can pump out and the additive damage there is absolute nuts. But anything that hits hard with AP is going to help. And basically, guess what? That's pretty much every single German ship in this game. So yes, he works on a bunch, for me at least, Manfred and GK are kind of my top picks for him. Now onto Von Spee. This is the Z-52 commander. You can put them on Elbing, but I will get to that. But Z-52, getting the Mistweaver Plus means that you're able to get your smokes back and your APCS Plus allows for those smaller caliber guns to just be able to consistently full pen DDs and then on top of it, consistently full pen battleships, which is key and critical to allowing you to damage farm them and so much more, but with six cents, helping you, allowing you to stay alive. The Z-52 line, really, he makes the Z-52 line feel just that much better. So Von Spey is absolutely great. Now let's talk about the Elbing and why APCS Plus kind of is a hidden detriment. <laughs> so when you put APCS regular on Elbing, you have to start occasionally thinking about that you might have to use the crappy German HE. And the reason for that is, is that you actually will start over penning DDs at close ranges. When you have APCS Plus, on Elbing. Now, that close range is not like five kilometers, it's like eight kilometers. So, APCS Plus can actually harm your Elbing in ways in terms of damage potential if you aren't realizing you need to switch to HE to continually pump out that damage onto DDs if they are coming after you. But if you do run APCS on the Elbing, it can be particularly nasty as you're going to start noticing battleships will start giving you Citadel crises. So, 
really great setup there, especially with Mystery River plus Dare, Daredevil, uh, Daredevil plus and Sixth Sense. Really helps out any of the German DDs right there. And of course, it does have APCS plus, so you can put him on anything with German AP. He's going to help out, but overall, Z52 is my main pick, Elbing as a secondary pick. Now onto the epic commanders for Germany, we have Lucas Lang. He just offers more health with Survival Plus and Recon and Surveillance Plus. For me, he's actually going to eventually be turned into, once I get APCS and get him high, high up, go into the GK line. The GK line is already incredibly tanky, so just giving it that much more health from Survivalist Plus is even better. And if you are a very good GK player, you're going to notice that the Recon and Surveillance Plus, you're going to go, hey, why would I want to take that? Well, what that allows you to do is spot those torpedoes well in advance for yourself and your team. Since commonly, you are going to be sitting back or you're going to be the tip of the spear. And having that longer sonar allows you to push hard as that tip of the spear and defend yourself from DDs that are gonna to try to slow you down. And if you can do that and you can keep on pushing, then those DDs will try to stop you and absolutely fail. So I would put him generally on that, but realistically, anything you want more health on, Elving, for instance, as well on there, he can definitely help out Hindenburg. It just makes everything just a little, or Lucas makes everything just a little bit better. Now onto Evening Breeze, with Victorious Charge Plus giving you more health whenever you get a kill, and Close Quarters Combat Expert Plus, you are definitely looking at a very offensive playstyle, so anything with a lot of secondaries and a lot of just straight in there, so you're schleefing more or less, your GK less, but your large cruisers, your Ager, your Admiral Schroeder, your Siegfried, definitely going to be helping out with those ships, so if you don't have a Legendary Commander to put in there, that happens to have Close Quarters Combat Expert uh, close quarters combat expert plus if i can talk then evening breeze will fit in quite there and help you out moving on to carl von muller bit of a meme commander here because you have fully prepared in sea raider which actually reduces your reload whenever you get a kill up to five kills so you're wanting something that's very fast shooting this basically means the z of six or z42 you technically could use it on the z52 or elbing but I generally say that pretty much it's your Z of six and your Z42. Muller fits on those the best Z52 next, but hopefully you have Von Spey to go into the Z52 as it changes it up and makes it a little bit better. But overall for me, Muller is a bit of a meme commander with that skill. And uh, realistically, you're only really gonna be popping it off during respawn or when you're just having a really good game else kind of better than a regular commander, kind of. Next up we have Alfred von Turpitz. We have Naval Bill and Horizontal Expert uh, Plus. Higher tiers for more credits because of Naval Bill, but anything you want to have more armor on because Hor Horizontal Protection Expert Plus, gonna be more going towards that GK line. So anything you have that's high tier that you enjoy, he'll help you get a little more credits and a little more XP, if, especially if you're grinding per se, or, you know, hey, just put it on a GK to add a little bit of extra dough coming your way and a little bit of extra armor. But outside of that, not much more. Now we have Guther Braun. Uh, we have Kraken Plus and Horizontal Protection Expert Plus. This is definitely what I would say is more of a mid-tier with medium guns type of ship. Because what you could do is put it on a ship that just needs a little bit more armor and or, especially with that Kraken Plus, you can put it, uh, you know on a respawn ship that absolutely murders, per se, like the Nuremberg or the Koenigsberg, and have a great time in respawn whenever that pops up. So, uh, you know, I'd say more mid-tier ships, else just better than a regular legendary, or regular commander, I should say. Then we have Hildegard. We have Survivalist Plus and Horizontal Protection Expert Plus. This is gonna be on anything tanky, GK, Elbing, especially because you have just additional health and adding more onto your armor there, but yeah, pretty much a GK for that. Now on to the Russian legendary and epic commanders. First of that, we have Kuznetsov. Now he is bulletproof. This specific ability allows you to reduce the total gun damage dealt to you. Russian ships are not really known for having a lot of armor. They're generally known for being health tanky or kind of having a mix of both armor and health. So realistically, bulletproof is going to help keep you alive and keep you a little bit tankier. Now with Sixth Sense, it allows you to know exactly when too many enemies are shooting at you, allowing you to back off. A lot of people will say Kremlin off the bat. For me, I'll actually put on Pietro. So the Pietro Pavlovsk really does help with this because A, Sixth Sense tells you when to actually stealth up, which you can kind of stealth up with the Pietro in comparison to the Kremlin, but the bulletproof skill makes the Pietro with an incredibly small hull and actually pretty decent armor that the Pietro has a lot tankier. 
I know people will say Makarov on that, but I'll get to that, I'll get to that. But yeah, for me, Kuznetsov actually works really well on the Pietro and on the Kremlin. But anything you wanna make just a little bit tankier definitely helps. Shout out on the small idea of the Delny, and you're gonna be dealing with a lot of shells coming your way, so Bulletproof might help you stay alive a teeny bit longer, but it, it's a small, small ad right there. Now on to Gorshkov. Gorshkov is pretty much for the Nevsky line. That's basically it, and he works so well because of Battlefield Support Plus, allows you to really help out your team having those two radars, being that backfield support while you're shooting at long range, you're able to make sure, hey look, maybe there's a DD in the air, pop radar, spot it, and your great guns can take them out fairly quickly. Now he does have IFHE Plus, if you do plan on using Gorshkov with a small lens, then IFHE Plus is definitely a strong pick, but I'd generally say APCS Plus is almost always better. Now you technically could use him for the destroyer lines, but overall I really wouldn't use him for that. I would just stick him right on Nevsky. If you do want to put him on anything else, basically anything that you know exploit weakness will help pretty much. He's kind of really just centered directly on the Nevsky line and or the small lens or the you know, Kutuzov type ships, much more HE focused ships or even HE capable ships for the Russians. So yeah, Gorshkov's kind of very much just for those. Now onto Stefan Makarov, any USSR ship, any Russian ship, he helps, period, period. APCS plus and horizontal protection expert plus makes him great for the Kremlin, great for the Moskva, Pietro, just absolutely makes them tanky nuts in that and hit hard with the APCS plus, but add in Marksman plus makes it much more capable with most of the lines that have that, but Generals plus, Torpedo Alert plus, Soft Sonar in there, and then Adrenaline Rush plus, so that basically, hey look, I've taken a lot of damage, now I'm even that much more lethal. Makarov is absolutely insane on any ship. For me, I'm putting on Kremlin because I found Pietro with Kuznetsov is actually quite fun and quite workable in that own case, but I know he is definitely a part of the Infinity Gauntlet that is the three for Pietro, so I completely understand it with putting him on there. But yeah, Kremlin or Pietro, I would definitely suggest, but technically because of APCS Plus, works great on Nedsky, works great on Delny. If you go for the Grozovoy, I'd probably just go for the Udaloy. You can put him on there as well. He just works for everything overall with just APCS Plus just showing how important it is to making your ships better. Dr. Tizla. Pretty much with Survivors Plus and AR Plus, it's got to be Kremlin or Pietro Pavlov's lines. Just making things a little bit tankier and having a little bit more firepower when you're at lower health. Dr. Tesla makes everything tankier and does that. So yeah, pretty much anything with that. So pretty much Kremlin, Pietro line will definitely help out. Now, I am not gonna even try to say this name. <laughs> oh, that is, that is just, that's just not happening here. <laughs> that's just not happening here. But this epic commander has Dauntless Dive Plus and Exploit Weakness Plus. This is your Admiral Nakimov line. Now, you could go for guess what, the Delny or the Grozovoy or Udaloy type situation along with the Alexander Nevsky just with exploit weakness, but I generally say Admiral Nakimov line, he's great for that line overall, especially with Dauntless Dive, plus making those dive bombers do that much more damage, plus exploit weakness, just absolutely able to make people pay for letting your fighters get through that area because those fighters are, or those fighter bombers, those are just weak in health on the Nakimov line. Olga, we have Olga here for pretty much Daredevil Plus and IFHE Plus. Pretty much the Delnir or the Udaloy. You could you could argue Nevsky, but overall with Daredevil Plus, I generally say more of a DD playstyle. As the Nevsky, while Daredevil Plus would help it, it's kind of a massive target and pretty easy to hit. And when you're at the low of health, uh, you're you're probably gonna die anyways, so that doesn't really matter much. Lev Geller with High Alert Plus and Survivalist Plus, anything you wanna be tankier, so this is pretty much gonna be your Kremlin line, technically your Pietro as well with Survivalist Plus, so if you don't have any of the legendary commanders, Lev Geller can go there pretty quickly. Now we go on to Flip, 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 uh, whatever, we'll go with it, Philip. Uh, we have Adrenaline Rush Plus and Bulletproof. This is your Kuznetsov that you have at home. <laughs> yeah, just Kuznetsov Light with Bulletproof there and Adrenaline Rush Plus. Whatever you wanna make tankier, that's 
that's basically his thing. And then we have a special commander of Skull Crusher with Adrenaline Rush Plus and Giant Hunter Plus. Better than a regular. So put him on anything that you want to buff the torpedoes or anything you want to put AR Plus on. That's really it. Very, very simple and kind of a boring commander and the Russian ones on. Now to end on the French this time, we're going to be starting off with the legendary commander that pretty much is probably in everyone's top three of the best legendary commanders in this game to get. Highly would suggest him. He has one ability that's complete crap, one ability that is optional depending on which line you're going up, and then four abilities that are god tier when you look at all of the ship lines for the French because six cents allows you to know when to get the book out in order to make sure that you can stay alive a little bit longer. Engine Overload Plus to make sure you can really get the crap out of there very fast often and always have it ready. Master Reloader Plus so that you can absolutely dumpster damage into things and then to round it out with just a cherry on top, APCS Plus, we have Felipe Abin Yeu here. He works on every single line, period, done, just get him. He, you choose. It's, it's hard because there's only, you can't have two of them. You can only get one of them, which is super annoying. They're working. Just make a copy of him. Just please make a copy of him. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. He would be absolutely perfect to have two, but realistically, we cannot clone him. So you have to choose which one to put him on. For me, I put him on Henri, but Republic works great. Clubert works great. Marseille helps. It definitely does. But yeah. Sleep just works on everything. He's going to be very hard for anyone. It, that's the, the hardest choice is where he goes. That's the hard part about Oni and Philippe is who do you want to buff more? For me, I love the Henri. I'm going to buff the Henri even more, but Republic is right there and Kleber right behind it, in my opinion, that if per se Henri gets nerfed sometime or something like that, oh, I'm switching him right over one of those two, and those two are going to be fantastic at what they do so let's move on to <clears throat> this legendary commander now a lot of people will go he's technically a legendary he, is, he technically is it's kind of got a weird section here to this one so Robert Jujard Robert Jujard is pretty much for your Colbert or your club air line because of that swift as a wind, it gives you a very long speed boost time but it doesn't give you that cooldown reduction that I feel would have been a better position to be in with just engine overload plus but yeah swift of the wind is there and technically with the coal bear the cruiser really does help out but without the without apcs plus or master reloader he really just only works on those two ships or the, that ship line with the with the club bear i'm trying to make sure i don't screw it up and accidentally spot them here when i'm saying this but yeah preheating plus daredevil plus uh, which you're actually you're probably not going to take because you're going to want that additional reload your Adrenaline Rush Plus, which can help in certain ways, but Swift of the Wind and Giant Hunter Plus, he really is kind of a mix of everything. I really wish he would have had APCS Plus. I really wish he would have had Master Reloader. It would have made him a much more unique contender to Philippe. It's just, Philippe is just so perfect kind of a type of thing, and Jujar kind of came in, and yeah, if I if I owned him, I'd put him on my Colbert and keep my Kleber with a regular commander because I just like having that option of getting my engine boost at back up faster rather than having a longer one to me. But yeah, Jujard, he's there. Now onto the French Epic Commanders and we're gonna rip the Band-Aid off with the worst one that's there between, between them because technically there are two Epic Commanders in here that are, I view are technically even better than Jujard in many ways, but we have Flora, Flora, uh, I don't know how I would say, Anime Girl here with Engine Overload Plus and Adrenaline Rush Plus. She's better than a regular commander. Put her on maybe Republic, Marseille, I don't know, anything that you really want. Ships with Engine Accelerator and Adrenaline Rush Plus to help out there, but yeah, she's there. Let's go to the good ones. Crimson Tide with Master Reloader Plus. So basically you got one skill that's really nice with uh, Felipe Avenue. And then you have Artillery Maintenance Expert Plus to get additional accuracy on your guns. For me, Republic. Republic it really does need that accuracy buff that she offers and just gives that nice, comfortable atmosphere right there. But of course, you can definitely go on Kleber, 
could definitely go on Henri, could definitely go on Marseille as well right there. Next up, we have Leia SB, or I think it's Southern Breeze, Sea, uh, sea Breeze. I don't know, we have Master Ruler Plus, once again, amazing. And then Daredevil Plus. So because of Daredevil Plus, you technically, I'd almost say Flaubert, but I'd really put her on Marseille. Because Marseille, you technically, at the higher tiers, do not need that additional reload on there because it already comes with four. So you already have enough reloads in order to make it work. Where on the other lines, like the Colbert, the Henri, and the Republic, they don't have enough. You have to take that additional rapid reload in order to make them really truly work and pump out the damage that you want. So for Leia, you technically could use that because now you can use that Daredevil Plus. So at lower health, the Marseille can wiggle that much better. So Leia definitely is there for the Kleber, Marseille, stuff like that. But realistically, anything you want Master Reloader Plus on, you can slap her on perfectly will work overall. And I just realized how bad that could sound out of context. Oh dear lord, we're gonna keep that in. <laughs> That's just fun. But yeah, yeah, anything else that you want because of Master Reload Plus works on every single French ship. And that is it for this week of the Legendary Epic Commander's Guide. Next week we're gonna be going all over the rest of the nations, the Italians, and everyone else past them. But hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. If you haven't, hit the notification bell to see whenever a new stream or video goes live. Special shout out to the Patreon and YouTube members along with the Super Chatters for helping support this channel. If you want to join them, you can join them via the join button down below or the link tree link down below as well. Thank you all for making this channel happen. Hopefully you are all enjoying this series. And if you are learning anything, let me know in the descriptions down below. If I've missed anything, once again, leave it in the description down below. I want to make sure everyone knows about some unique combos or any unique ideas of where you put your commander specifically. Love to see them in the comment section down below. Else, have a good day, everyone. Peace.